In this episode of 3D Chill, I'm going to show you how to make this 3D printed mushroom lamp. As soon as the sun sets, turn this lamp on and get ready to impress your friends. It's great for beginners with minimal cleanup and easy assembly. As easy as this was to print, I ended up making a mistake that ruined a section of the print. Stick around till the end and I'll show you how you can avoid making the same mistake. First, we head on over to Thingiverse, search for the word mushroom lamp, and it should be one of the top results. I like this lamp because of its Super Mario Brothers vibe. Make sure you're on the right page. Click download all files. Do a quick preview of the downloaded files so you can make sure you have the right parts. There should be three files, the body, the head, and the single plug. I'll be using Cura for slicing. For the stem, we're going with low quality and a 20% infill. You won't need any supports. This setting will take roughly 20 hours. For the head, we'll keep the same settings. Although, it probably wouldn't hurt to go higher quality if you wanted a smoother look. At low quality, this will take roughly 13 hours. You also won't need supports for the head. For the plugs, you'll need to print 9 of these. Add 8 more. Choosing the quality of the plug is up to you. I chose super quality settings because, as you'll see later in the video, printing at low quality doesn't look as good when light shines through it. Infill won't matter at all for these plugs. I'll also be using supports. At these settings, it'll take roughly 8.5 hours to print. Once you have your parts sliced up, it's time to send them to your printer. We're going to be using White Inland PLA Plus for this print. Make sure to save the silica gel packet that comes with your spool. You can store it with your filament in a one gallon baggie to keep it dry once you're done. I ended up running into a bed leveling issue. The nozzle was a bit too far from the bed. Luckily, it wasn't too much of a mess to clean up. I like to have skirts on all my prints. It helps me gauge that the bed needs leveling without having to load a bed level test print. Here, I'm leveling as I print. I had to practice this before getting consistent results. After a little bit of tweaking, the bed looks great. So let's keep it going. For the head, we're going to use Inland Red PLA Plus. After changing the filament, we'll need to manually extrude the red filament and push out any remaining white filament. We're finally ready to finish the rest of the print.
After roughly 40 hours of printing, all the parts are finally finished. Aside from the mushroom cap, stem, and plugs, you'll also need an E26, E27 light socket. You'll want to make sure you get one with a toggle switch. For this build, I'm using an RGB bulb. This will give me the flexibility to dramatically change the look of the lamp as well as set the mood. I'll be building a few of these, so I got a multi-pack. This one in particular comes with two RGB and two white bulbs. Ensure that both the bulb and your cord works before assembly. The last thing you want is to put this thing together and find out you have a defective part. This RGB remote comes with a lot of features. You can choose from 12 individual colors as well as slow color fade or variable speed. Uh, I'm not sure what you'd call it. I'm calling it disco mode. There should be plenty of clearance for you to push the socket into the base. There's a little slot at the bottom that'll hold the cord in place. The issue with the socket is it's a little bit too loose. You'll need to either glue it in place or find a way to keep it from moving around so much. I ended up using a felt strip. It's something that I had laying around, and it works very well in holding the socket snug. I trimmed it to fit the circumference of the socket. This will keep the socket from falling out the bottom. If you find that your cord doesn't stay in place, you could add a bit of glue here. I'm now going to show you why I chose super quality to print these plugs. Let's start with the low quality print. You can see the concentric rings are very pronounced. Next, let's inspect the dynamic print quality. There are more rings, but they're not as pronounced. And last but not least, let's inspect the super quality print. Finally, comparing the two quality settings side by side, there doesn't seem to be much difference between them. Here on the left is a dynamic quality print, and on the right is the super quality print. Can you tell the difference between these two prints? Because I can. Now it's time to clean up the plugs. The supports are pretty easy to snap off. Although you're gonna have to do this nine times. While we didn't use supports for the head, there's still some stringing to clean up. Finally, we're ready to start installing the plugs. They should snap securely into place. You'll want to eventually glue them into place, but for now, I'll just snap them in. It's time to install the bulb and finally attach the head to the base. I'm extremely impressed with the quality of this design, and it's very simple to install the head securely to the base.
Now, before I show you the final product, let me tell you about how I messed up this print. About halfway through the print, I started to notice significant warping at the point where the base screws into the head. Well, as it happens, my air purifier was set to automatically go on high during the night. And with cold temperatures outside, it created a rather cool draft that caused the print to lift. I left the print alone thinking that perhaps I could still screw the head into the base. Unfortunately, the threads were too warped and I didn't want to damage the head, so I didn't force it. I attempted to fix the warped print by trying two things I found online. One was to submerge the print in hot water and attempt to bend it back. Even though our water temperature is pretty high, this didn't work very well. My second approach was to heat up the print with a blow dryer. I had mixed results with this technique. But I was unable to straighten it. I still haven't given up on the print. But for now, I'm just going to set it aside and attempt to fix it later. This is a fun lamp worth giving as a gift. It's easy to assemble and has both form and function. When you pair an RGB bulb with this lamp, you can create a wider variety of color options for your lighting, bringing enhanced customization to your space. Leave a comment below if you ended up building this lamp. Until next time.